a high frequency channel where source and spirit meet in tandem, where forces between the mind, body, and spirit meet in friendship, while building a unity of energy and creation, fluidity in consciousness, where we let our spirits speak. Welcome to another episode, guys, of the Raven's Den. Yes, we have our amazing, amazing guest here, um, Tammy Trotter Wells here. She is a intuitive card reader, an ultra empath, a conjurer, a root worker, as well as a teaching high priestess and ordained minister. Say hello. Hi, how are you? Everything All right. good? Yeah, everything's great. Everything's right. great. All right, so here it goes. Okay. What we want to know, because of the fact that you've spent a majority of your life on spiritual work, okay, yes. being spiritual, living spiritual, and going through these things, we want to hear your story. So let us know where you started, how you started, and even some of the experiences that you might have had uh, during the process. Okay. Um, I believe the easiest way is to go from the very beginning. Um, at, I remember at eight years old, I used to sit in my bedroom and stare at things for endless time. I mean, it was just, it, I would stare at things for hours because I thought I could make them move. I really did. I thought I could. Now, none of these things ever moved. The telekinetics. <laughs> yes. But my mother was one of those people that on Friday nights, you know, this was back in the late 70s, early 80s, and they did the horror movies on Friday nights mm -hmm. after the news, like at 1130. Right. And it was always a big deal for us to sit up and watch them. It was always some sort of B movie, you know, where spiders are taking over the town or, you know, there's a vampire loose and you've got this, this uh, cheesy vampire hunter after it. But every now and then there would be these amazing movies um about overall good versus evil yes it was these people had these abilities and back then we called it esp right and they had esp and they would help and in the end of course they're using their powers good triumphed over evil they saved the world they saved the person it's a wonderful story and i was captivated and i used to sit there and think i want to be like them I want some sort of ability so I can help people. Um, I had always been very spiritual, even as a child. Got to go to church. I've got to say my prayers. Um, I was very dedicated to spirituality, you know, from a very young age. And as I grew older, there were certain things that would happen that I knew were going to happen. Hmm. I couldn't explain how I knew. I just knew. Um, it never worked for me personally, but it did for other people, family members, friends. Um, well, those that you're close to. Right, right. right. It would, it, things like that I would know. Um, someone would say something like, um, oh gosh, uh, well, uh, for instance, okay, there was this one girl, she was around probably 12 years old, 12, 13 years old, and she was a friend of a friend. And I guess I was around 16, 17 years old at the time. And I looked at her and it was just a gut feeling. It's just something strange hit me. And I looked back at our, our mutual friend and I said, she's going to be pregnant by the time she's 16. And, you know, my friend just looks at me like, where did that come from? That and I looked at her and I said, I don't know. Definitely well, an in interesting prophecy. <laughs> exactly. It was very strange the way it hit me. It's just, wow, I just knew it. Right. And, you know, a few years later, she's pregnant at 16. Um, and she had never given any clues if that's, you know, that she was, uh, had that kind of relationship going on. She was the sweetest little kid. She really was, but it was just something I knew. Um, yeah. They actually I call that clear cognicity. Yeah. Yes. I know now after all these years that I, I am what we call clear cognizant. Yes. There are certain things I look at a person and a thought hits and it's just like a punch in the gut. And when that happens, I know, pay attention. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like 
Hey. Yes. You yes. Got, you got a message here. Um, can you please yes. open the envelope and, you know, can you give it to somebody? <laughs> exactly. And I really didn't know what to do about it because I didn't know anybody else that would do that. Right. right. So I just kind of kept to myself on it. And when I was 17, a friend of mine, um, I would go and spend time with her. And she was gone this one weekend, but her mother was my mom's best friend. Hmm. And I liked hanging out with her mom too. It got me out of my home. It wasn't a great situation at home. Um, so it kind of gave me an outlet. So I went to spend the weekend with this, this woman. And she says, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to the store downtown, but don't tell your mom I'm taking you. Now, this was in Greenville around 1988, and, what, and what type of store are we talking? She wouldn't tell me till we got there. Ah. The store was called Rainbows and Moonbeams. I don't know if anybody remembers that store in upstate Greenville, but it was awesome. It was a great store. And this and was a, like, metaphysical, holistic, metaphysical, you know, pagan yes. type store? Okay. Yes. Yes. When I walked in, I thought I have never seen anything like this before. Little, little kid in a candy store. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. And I was so excited, but I thought, oh my gosh, am I really here? Right, right. And, you know, my mom's friend looks at me and she goes, I told you, don't say a word. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so we spent some time in the store. We talked to the proprietor of the store. Um, and we got to talking about spell casting. And of course, I was like, oh, this is something I've always been interested in. Spellcrafting, yeah. Yes. And so um, we had a, a talk. We were there for, gosh, a couple of hours, easy. And she gave me the, uh, the uh, tools that I needed for my first spell. Hmm. So I went home and I worked the spell and I'd always been the good little Christian girl. You know, so of course there was a little emotional battle before I did it, that ethical thing. And finally I'm like, you know what? It feels right. Can I do it? Can't I do it? Will yeah. it work? <laughs> and, and then I kind of had this idea of, you know what? Probably won't do anything. Probably won't. But maybe, just maybe it might. So I went ahead and I worked my spell. And I was very comfortable doing it it kind of felt like second nature. Right. Something that I'd never gotten inside the Christian church because I tried to be the perfect little Christian kid, but I never found my little niche there. I never found where I was comfortable. So ultimately you, you're a natural, I mean, you're a natural yeah. witch. Yes. Okay, that's, it's not like someone who, you know, goes into what we call, you know, well, in some sections of our community, they call it a clergy um, but in other ways, just teaching, education, you know, and schooling and, and mm -hmm. the craft, you actually had natural abilities mm -hmm. within this. That was great. That's great. Yeah. And it started at an early age. It really did. Okay. Um, and then I'll tell you in a minute when we fast forward to more, more present time of why I am, con why you would consider me a natural witch. It's hereditary. Okay. Um, so I still kind of strayed uh, away from the magical aspect for a few years because I just wasn't sure. Sure. Um, you know, I, am I going to burn in hell? And, and am I a horrible person? And it was a, a really deep ethical battle within myself. Right. Um, but I couldn't get away from it. I just couldn't walk away completely. Kept feeling pulled. Yes. Yeah, to yes. It. Um, I went to church, my church one day. And I had a friend go with me. We had a speaker come in, a prophet. And every time a prophet was called into any of the area churches, I was there. Right. Give me a seat as close as possible. I want a message. Tell me. And I did get a message one time. One of the prophets walked past the pew and he stopped and backed up and looked at me. He goes, you're going to witness one day. Little did he know. <laughs> I sure did. Just maybe not the way he thought. Right. Um. But this, that one particular day, my friend was with me. He was a little more what we would consider agnostic. Mm -hmm. And the which, prophet's which, prophet which, is a, a, which would mean what? Agnostic means that they don't believe, but they don't disbelieve. They need to see something to believe it. So a real, like a religious realist, basically. Yes, okay. basically. Fair enough. Um, 
and that's what she was you know she was like you know what i'm not gonna say it's not real but until i see it i can't believe it right but i talked her into going to church with me that day and the prophet's talking and she looks at me and she goes this is just bull yeah uh you're allowed to cuss on the show just fyi okay. no filter Good. she said uh this is just bullshit right and everybody around me is looking and i'm embarrassed and i'm just oh my gosh and she goes He's sitting here preaching, saying he'll tell me a message if I pay him, that we all have to tithe to be godly. I had completely. One, that was missed. one of the things that bothered me too. I mean, yes. I'm not I'm not knocking the religion per se, but it's it's just the fact that it's part of the program, right? You know, it's it's part of the ideology, whether it be Catholicism or Christianity, where tithe, you know tithing was is a very important part almost like uh if you were to look as far back as like egypt mm -hmm. and when you know before uh before you pass uh you have to make sure that you have enough riches uh mm -hmm. to give to i'm pretty sure oh i'm i'm gonna kick myself in the head doing this um because it's been so long mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure it was Osiris yes um, and if you do not have enough gifts or tithings um, you cannot cross over to the other side and you stay in limbo which which was incredible it was crazy when I first read Rosicrucianism and and it was just incredible so yeah I, I, I get that whole tithing thing Definitely. oh yeah it to me it was something that I was used to hearing I heard it every Sunday but right. here I have an agnostic woman who has never been to church, you know, well, I won't say has never been, she's probably been to church maybe three or four times in her life. Right. Um, and she was able to see through. Mm -hmm. Whereas I had, you know, them rose colored glasses on, I was trying to get my way to heaven. Um, and she got up and walked out and she, before she walked out, she goes, you can stay, but I'm going to be in the car. I'm going to go smoke right. a cigarette and walked out. <laughs> So, so I sat there and it, I, I, re, I got up and walked out when I thought about what she said. And that really steered me towards a new path. That was, okay, this is not working for me anymore. I've got to find what is. So what, what legitimately pulled you to, I mean, were you just fascinated about the craft? Were you, um, obviously you're natural, but what I'm saying is that there must have been something that pulled you when you first started like reading about it, researching about it mm -hmm. or something. I mean, was it the, uh, you know, uh, polytheistic under, you know, openness? Was it, you know, the, the, you know, all the gods and goddesses? Was it the, mm -hmm. the craft itself? Was the, it was the fact that there was a, a multitude of languages, you know, like it was more, and, 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 you know, yeah. language, it stuff like that. It was more the craft itself that drew me. It was magic mm -hmm. was the core thing that dro drove me to my path that, that right. interested me. Um, when I was around 30, I had a great job that I loved. And you had a couple of office, we call them our little bitties in the office, that were always stirring trouble. Something went do down. I would tell you now it wasn't that bad. <laughs> It was a simple lidocaine injection that was approved, but because we used the doctor's office lidocaine, mm -hmm. HR got involved and I lost my job over it. Holy moly. Now the office manager approved it, but she threw me under the bus when mm -hmm. it was brought to HR because she was saving her ass. Right, um, right. I was devastated because I loved the doctor that I worked for. He was an amazing doctor. I was devastated and I went straight to a store downtown called Dragon's Treasure and it was in Greenville at the time and I walked in and explained to this little woman behind the counter uh, what had happened with my job and I said I don't want them to do it to anyone else because I was devastated. Did you, do a, never... did you end up doing a binding spell? No, no. I actually did a reveal. Oh, okay. To reveal their true nature. Right. Um, because they had me fooled at first. Hmm. Um, and then I just didn't want anyone else to get hurt like I was. I didn't want anyone else to suffer because of their pettiness. 
So she told me what to do. And then she kept looking at me. She's like, you know, we need to talk. So I kept going in a couple of times um, more. And then about three months after that spell I worked, uh, I got a phone call from one of the girls that worked at the office. And both ladies were revealed to be the troublemakers hmm. in their um, things that they were doing against company policy had been right. revealed. And one of the women lost her job. And at first I felt guilty. And then I thought, what if it was me? What if I caused her to get fired? And then I thought, no, 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 no. In my, my, my spell, I worked specifically for their deeds to be revealed. I had nothing to do with it. It was her actions that caused it. A lot of people would have more than likely asked you that question mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the craft. Mm -hmm. uh, and being a high priest myself, um, the, the biggest question I get is, isn't magic manipulation? See, I hate that word because and I know the, the, the dictionary says that it's a manipulation of energy. I consider it an influence in a yeah. sense, um, an intentional influence. Right. Um, you know, because uh, we always say, you, know, be, you being a teacher and I would, would agree that um, when we do send out or project, you know, the spell or spell crafting, it is basically just sending out the intention right. of the given outcome that's desired. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now, let me ask you something, and this is, yeah. uh, and this is important for the listeners and the watchers to, to know about this. Okay. And there's going to be many people that are probably going to ask you this question, so might as well answer it right away. Okay. When it comes to spell casting and spell crafting, Mm -hmm. What is your take on why either it wouldn't work or it did? Oh, that's a good question. Um, a lot of times, well, the ultimate reason why something's going to work is because it was never meant to be. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. It's not meant to be. Um, I find that a lot of people, especially beginners, oh, when they first start casting, and this is what I get because people be, well, you know, I, I don't cast until I talk to you and I don't do this <laughs> until I talk to so-and-so. Right. And the first thing I say is, okay, would you wait on me to pray? No. I mean, so yeah. why are you wait on me? You shouldn't wait on me to spell cat, to, to conjure. You really shouldn't. Right. If right. you feel comfortable. Okay. And, and if you're educated enough to actually exactly. do it. Exactly. And like when I teach, Conjuring 101 doesn't come until way down the line. Right. Yeah. That, actually, that's as far as I remember, and this was way back when, when you know, when I got my reverendship, uh, more, mm -hmm. than a, more than a decade ago, um, I'm pretty sure that Conjuring and Spellcasting wasn't until my second, either my second or third degree. Uh, and, see, I do more towards the end of your first year. That's when we start talking about it. Yeah, um, it was mainly, well, in Avalonian tradition, I mean, again, I was taught mm -hmm. by a uh, Cabot, you know, Cabot, yes. okay, yes. you know, Lori Cabot. Oh, yes, um, oh, yeah. I was, oh, actually yeah. Taught by one, <laughs> I was actually taught by one of her. Oh, wow. Her students. And Wonderful. The, the very first thing that she said from, you know, from the Cabot Kent Hermetic Temple, mm -hmm. um, the very first thing that she said was, well, the few things very extremely important to know right off the bat is knowing that you are absolutely not supposed to do anything to harm anyone in any way shape or form exactly okay you are absolutely not supposed to do any of this for personal gain whatsoever mm -hmm. and if you do it's going to bite you in the ass mm -hmm. okay big time more than likely either comes back in three or even a hundred times fold depending on you know mm -hmm. what it is Mm -hmm. And the third one was respect, mm -hmm. respecting other students, you know, other, other journeys, yes. other paths, um, and, and living in the mindset of coexistence. 
Exactly. And, and, and now it's very difficult for a lot of people, honestly. And, and if you look into the secular religions, I know now we're getting into religion. Um, <laughs> but if you look at the uh, secular monoth monotheistic religions and practices, a lot of them don't necessarily teach coexistence. No, they don't. And, I was very surprised too. And, be, and I was too, because I was born and raised Christian and Catholic at one point. Okay. And what, what really bothered me about, and it's just my, my personal opinion, mm -hmm. but what really bothered me about the religion itself was that it was so confined to control and yes. and it was so deemed even we can even go as far back as uh like the quran mm -hmm. and these things and say oh, allah which i'm not knocking them i mean i mean they have yeah. really great texts you know and, and a lot of great guidelines but the truth of the matter is living a coexistence life is not going to be based on okay if you don't believe in what i believe then i'm casting you out yes yes because education is key i i now understand this is that a lot of people even down here living in the south okay mm -hmm. a lot of people when they see the the star or they see the reiki healing wheel or mm -hmm. they say um specifically the pentacle and the pentagram i know they're two two separate separate things a lot of people don't know that but yes there are um, but when they see the, the, you know, the star that I'm wearing, they usually, they always mistake it for the star of David. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, but but the, the funniest thing about that is that the, the actual pentacle and, and, and the pentagram and the star of David are two entirely different, different things. stars altogether. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and when people also see like the fairy star. Okay, mm -hmm. for, you know the people that practice yes. the you know the fake craft yes and things like that people look at it and they're like wait you know what is it or, or even what you know this i mean hoping that you do of course i'm mm -hmm. fairly confident that you do you know the tetragrammaton i mean mm -hmm. a lot you know a lot of people people are going to look this up like what is a tetragrammaton yeah <laughs> uh, but i mean we're going as far back as way before biblical scriptures were, were mm -hmm. even created Right. And, and I would like to share this with people because we're through, you know, we're going through the holiday season mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot, a lot of the holidays and I'm going to say this as nicely and as politically correct. Okay. Which yes. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> but as, polit as politically correct as I can. <laughs> all right. Is to say that I, I would be open and sure to say that a lot of not necessarily Catholicism per se, Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the Christian faiths mm -hmm. um, have adopted, not stolen, like some people say. I'm sorry, right. but that, that's ridiculous. Don't say that. Okay, you're right. just going to cause a war. All right. But they have adopted mm -hmm. and adapted yes. a lot of the pagan Sabbaths. Oh, of course. Okay. Of course. To, to um, cater to their religion. I mean, that's Correct. that, which is, to, which is some people get into fights about this stuff. I really don't care. You know, I'm not one to have confrontations about these things. Right. But when you really break it down and you look at the timelines and, and where they are, um, it's, it's safe to say that in a sense, theoretically, uh, it seems that way. It does. Yeah. It does seem oh, that way. Of course. And I mean, that was one of the things that I I learned, especially you know, and with like you said, with the holidays coming up and with Yule, um, right. when when Europe was phasing more into adopting Christianity, it was a lot easier for the Christian, uh, whichever faith, the Christian faiths, to say, okay, well, we want to get these people involved in the church, we want to convert them to Christianity, right. so we're going to celebrate this. It'll be similar to what they celebrated, but now it's got a Christian name yeah. to it and Christian beliefs. And again, I'm not knocking. I'm not. No, there's um, no reason to. No, there's not. And I, and I get angry when people do that. It really bothers me because, you know, 
I, it, same thing happens in paganism. It's all about finding what works for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally So agree. why should we persecute them for adapting and, you know, what works for them? Well, That's the way I've always looked at it. What we're actually, if we end up doing that, mm -hmm. what you're talking about, we end up becoming the very people that are doing it exactly. to us. Exactly. I mean, and, and it's interesting, and I love talking about this, and, and mm -hmm. we'll get right back to your story in, oh, in a moment. Um, and, and, I, and I love people to hear this stuff because it's, mm -hmm. I'm all about coexistence. Okay, yes. I really, really am. And yes. I mean, I went from, and I'm just gonna do like a brief, like a brief snippet of yes. like how, how my path went. Mm -hmm. I went from the, you know, Christian, Christian Catholic to, you know, Druidism to, you know, witchcraft and paganism to, mm -hmm. you know, and then I did universal spiritualism. I went into Reiki healing and then I did quantum and there, and there was a bunch of different things that I did, but the one thing stand true to all spiritual practices and, mm -hmm. and I'm beginning to, to realize this, you know, over time, I just, you know, I just turned 41, of course. And, you know, as we get older, we, you know, we tend to, you know, kind of take in the grandeur, you know, the bigger oh, yes. things. And I saw the coexistence in, mm -hmm. in a lot of it. And even in the psychic, the spiritual community, there is a lot of controversy. There is a lot of arguing and fighting uh, yes. amongst us where but it's sad it really really is and we should not be like that anymore no. i mean there's there's a couple of things that, that legally legally shouldn't be done mm -hmm. i mean but aside from that i talk to all walks of life i mean all walks i mean you could be satanic you could be you know luciferian um you know pagan christian catholic buddhist you know, Confucius, it, it yeah. doesn't matter. It, even an atheist, okay, or just a, an angelic believer, as mm -hmm. they call it, there's not an evangelist, but who, you know, you, I think I have my yeah. own personal opinions about certain things. But well, what, what I'm saying is that each one of us has our own journey. Yes. Yes. And, and during that journey, as, as you, um, that's a whole nother episode. But uh, all together, that's, that's a whole nother conversation um, as to who we are, what we are, you know, stuff like right. that. Right. But um, I do. I'd be interested in that. I want you yeah, to know. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I, I definitely, that's, that's definitely going to be something that we'll do for another show if you want to, you know, if you want to talk about that okay. uh, later on. But I do, I do love hearing everyone's journey, but I do notice mm -hmm. one interesting truth. Okay. That a lot of our journeys are very similar mm -hmm. in nature. Yes. yes. Um, there's tragedy. Mm -hmm. There's death. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a lot of forms of abuse. Yes. And um, now I'm not one to knock being medicated. I know that a lot of people that do, you know, with the deal with paganism and holistic stuff, mm -hmm. you know, they're always into it. But sometimes I do accept the fact that sometimes you just, and it's extreme, um, mm -hmm. but there is a time where you may not have any other option. Right. You may not. Right. And I mean, I too am medicated in some way, shape or form. I'm a very big, uh, transparent kind of person mm -hmm. when, when it comes to anxiety and bipolar disorder and ADHD. And although I, I don't believe in diagnoses per se, mm -hmm. um, but what I do believe is that a lot of us do suffer from those things. Yes. Okay. The, the PTSD, the bi the bipolar yes. one and two, uh, the anxiety because of the, the, um, the, the ultra empathy and the empathic yes. side, you know, ultra feeling mm -hmm. and, you know, being a clear and a cognitive, being able to, to hear and sense and see and smell and taste and touch mm -hmm. and all, and all these things. And I'm not saying everybody's got all those. Okay. They're, no, they're, no, but it is common. It's, it's, it's more right. common than what I ever remember hearing before. That's because a lot of it was hidden. Exactly. A lot of it was hidden within diagnoses. And, right and in a lot of i've actually noticed i had a, i had a friend of mine that 
um, he was uh, diagnosed with like four or five different things. Mm -hmm. uh, he ended up going into an asylum. And oh, uh, like, so, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but his parents really didn't have any answers. Yeah. To how to help him. And when they put him in the hospital, he actually told me, and this was verbatim. Mm -hmm. I won't say his name or anything, you know, for disclosure right. purposes. Yeah. But um, this individual said, you know what I found out uh, that was interesting about being in that hospital was that a majority of those people were gifted. Yes. A lot of it's, them were gifted. And yeah, to the extreme. That. <laughs> and to the extreme. Like yes. out of control, no control, yes. not even understanding their gifts. Okay. Yes. And, and how to keep them grounded. I, it, that is so true. When this was back in around probably 05, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, I was hearing voices. I and still do. Yeah, yeah. Um, my uncle, when I was a child, was schizophrenic and had actually taken his own life from it. And so um, I start hearing these voices and I'm thinking, oh no, I've inherited it. Um, this went on for several weeks to the right. point that it was deafening. Mm. So I stopped. Uh, I, I decided at work that day. I don't like this. I was, oh, it was awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought, that's it. I'm going to go commit myself. Oh, so you um, volunteered. I was going to do this. I had oh, my okay. mind made up. Okay. I left work. I stopped by because I was going to tell my teacher, right. first of all, before I did anything. And then I was going home to tell my husband at the time and my daughter that mommy needed to go away for a little bit. For a little bit, yeah. And, and yeah, just a little bit and let mommy get good again. Right. Um, And so I walk into his living room in tears <laughs> and he's going what's wrong to him? He just talked to me. And I, I tell him I'm going crazy. I'm schizophrenic. Why do you think that? And I said, cause I'm hearing voices. Hearing voices right. And he sat there and looked at me like, he's like, sweetie, you're not crazy. Like, yeah. And he goes, <laughs> honey, you're not schizophrenic. You're clairaudient. Right. I said, well, what does that mean? He goes, look it up. Look it up. <laughs> See, and, and everybody who doesn't know, Okay, mm -hmm. everyone who doesn't know about these Claire's, let's, yes, Claire be, let's be very, very clear. Okay, let's yes. be very clear as to, because I've actually had a lot of people say that they have absolutely no idea what abilities they have. Mm -hmm. So That's a common thing. Okay, it's so, a common so, thing. So within reason, um, I, I'll say my part, okay, because mm -hmm. I, I do, I, there is one specific that I still can never get for the life of me, can't get that word. Um, and it's the smell. It's the Claire smell. Yeah, it's like Claire sentient or sent yes. something well, like sen that. Well, I know that Claire sentient. Yes. Um, Claire sentient is when you go into groups and you're physically and mentally affected by people's energy. Okay. I know yes. that part. Clairvoyant is being able to see the future, of course. Yes. Okay. Um, Claire audience is to hear. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, clear visionary is to be able to see, um, maybe it's something I made up um, mm -hmm. because I make up a whole lot of different words, <laughs> um, but I say clear visionary where you're able to see in live time people's oh, past, yes. people's past. Okay, yes. whether that's past lives or current now site you know now life cycle past yeah um but well, but the the feel the clear clear feel i i forgot what that one was too but there, it's just those two the smell and the and the touch and and honestly i never knew what i was for like the longest time yeah for the i think a lot time. of people go through that I was like, okay, well, I can feel when I touch people, I can, you know, I can feel their energy, their emotions. I can, yeah, you know, it, it, their emotions go in my head. Um, you know, I get affected by them. I, I yes. actually mirror and, and mirror, you know, mirror reflect them as well. Like yes. my attitude and my mindset changes. It does. Players. Um, it, it's crazy stuff. And the biggest thing that I can share with gifted people because again, I am a spiritual development mentor mm -hmm. and coach. And the, the biggest thing is, and 
I don't mean this in the negative sense. I mean, right. Just to have self-control, to mm -hmm. have control over yourself, to have control over your abilities, mm -hmm. and, and to know when it's time to either turn them down yes. or totally shut them off. Right. Entirely. But don't shut them off for too long because you know, yeah, you, because then you can long. lose it. It's harder to get it yeah. back when you do that. And I will say this, and this is only one of the beliefs that I have. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been told that this is true and not true. Um, it depends on who I, who I am talking about. Mm -hmm. That if you do, and I'm going to say this for each and every single gifted person out there, and I'm not talking about any religion, okay? Mm -hmm. Any any gifted person, because I've we're all over. Okay, we're yeah, all it over. doesn't matter what religion you are. And exactly, make sure gifted. people know that. <laughs> every you know, gifted people are everywhere. Yes, and in, in every walk of life, no matter. Yes, uh, and a lot of unfortunately, government and stuff likes to control you know certain ways that people hear about stuff and you know they like to censor things and, and this is not a censored show so yeah but <laughs> <laughs> um but it's it's a situation to where guys you're not alone no that's the biggest so, thing you're not alone yeah and a lot of people feel especially when it comes to family um because a lot of us are the black sheep Okay, a yes. lot of us are the ones who, you know, when people look at you in the family, and they're like, yeah, that's, uh, you got to mm -hmm. watch that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. there's something, there's something, you know, different. usually they say something wrong. Yes. You know, something wrong or there's something different. Down south, you know, we, uh, we just say, well, she ain't right. Right, right. <laughs> she which, ain't right. Which, in a sense, again, brings up the wrong word. Um, exactly. So, the thing is, is that there guys... Ladies and gentlemen, there are absolute, there's nothing wrong with you. There's no. nothing. No. Uh, because the more this world shifts into an open ideology mm -hmm. and a practice of, mm -hmm. well, I guess a practice of openness. I mean, I, yes. I, you know, that's yes. really what it truly is. It's just, it is. you know, being open, being fluid, knowing that, there are different people mm -hmm. out there knowing that, I mean, look, I've seen some crazy shit in this world. Okay. <laughs> and I've experienced some stuff doing like exorcisms and, uh -huh. and I, and I've seen some shit. Okay? Yes. Qu quoting a, a, a really old movie. I've seen some shit. Okay. But the situation is that what we do as teachers, and we're speaking from both, you know, both sides, a open universal spiritualism, as well as the craft. Yes. Okay. Our basis, and you can, you can correct me or not. It's fine. I okay. love controversy in some okay. way, shape or form <laughs> is that we teach in order for people that just like parenting. Okay. To not make the mistakes that we made. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, and, and I tell students that, especially in the conjuring class, trust me when I tell you this, been there, done that. And don't go there. Fuck up <laughs> and not doing it again. Yeah. So now I can share my screw up with you. And I've had people ask me, why are your conjurers that you do for others? Why are they more successful or... Well, you know, I and my roommate now, she did a spell and she asked me, why is it not working? I'm like, oh, sweetie, it is working. Um, you're just not looking at it, the big picture. You're right. looking at what you had up here. Right. Well, what you had up here didn't get conveyed to universe. Right. The universe just heard what come out And here. that's the biggest challenge when it comes yes. to, to spell crafting and conjuring. Yes. You have to be intensively and extremely specific. Yes. Look at the big picture. Think, if I do this, what are the possible outcomes? Yep. What could happen? If you go in and you look at conjuring, spell casting, um, whatever you want to call it, if you go in with a very level head, and I will say, if you're angry at something, walk away. Yeah, it, it will, it will go the opposite way. Yeah, yeah. just wait. Just wait yeah. till you calm down. Yep. Um, and then look at it logically. 
Yes, magic is all that comes from within. Yes, 100%. And the energy when it comes to being good and evil or bad or good and bad mm -hmm. um it's really the intention of exactly the conjurer. i mean that's 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 what you mean right yes yes okay. yes when you're conjuring the three biggest things there's more to learn in conjuring within than conjuring the thing right. that i tell people if you take nothing else from what i'm telling you remember this intent desire focus keep your intent clean and pure and focus i will say i love i love this educational shows i really really do mm -hmm. and i love these interviews that we're just uh, sitting here and educating people because mm -hmm. people, some people just don't know no they don't and and it's okay we're not we're not yeah, criticizing we're not, yeah we're not yeah. criticizing anybody that do that doesn't understand but the truth of the matter is that even and, and this is controversial like you would not believe mm -hmm. okay there's really no difference. Mm -hmm. I love saying this and people are like, yeah, right. No, seriously. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between manifestation and abundance mm -hmm. and conjuring. Exactly. Okay. There's no difference. It's the same thing. The, the I magic, do agree with you on that. Okay. I, it's the, it, it, the only difference I would be agreeable to say would be the ideology. Yes. Yes. Um, because there's, there is one part to manifestation and abundance that is, that is different, mm -hmm. which is the, not the intent, mm -hmm. but the gratitude. Yes. That's, that's the different part of it. Aside from that, there's no difference. Right. There's no difference at all. Right. And as long as you have, I'm agreeing with you. As long as you have a clip. Sorry. Shh. Chris, can you pick him? Gotta Sorry love, about gotta, that. No, gotta love the animals. <laughs> um, I have three cats of my own, and my wife's a dog person too. So was, that's hey, me. Hey, all yeah. my roommate's dog. He wanted to say hello. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> no worries. Um, but but pure pure focus. Yes. Okay. Clear intention. Yes. Okay, clear intention, as well as doing the things. Oh, and this is this is the greatest part. Doing the things in unconditional love. See, that's what everybody forgets. Everybody forgets about keeping that positive yep. vibe, um, that that clear vibe. It's you interesting, know. and I'll and I'll give you an example of what you're talking uh -huh. about just briefly, just just for a brief moment. Okay. Um, a family member, no names, okay, mm -hmm. for disclosure, right? Um, needed some help, mm -hmm. and my and I'll say this because my mom's okay with this. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was uh, is uh, kind of like on the fence. She's universal spiritualist now, sort of mm -hmm. Christian based. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. an interesting combination, to be honest. Um, but again, I don't knock her for it. Um, cause I, I still pray too, but, yeah. um, it, it's a situation where, he, you know, this individual needed help mm -hmm. and she asked me to help this person, okay, this mm -hmm. family member. And I got all the materials and we're talking about spell crafting and conjuring. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I got all the stuff. I still haven't done the friggin' thing. Okay. I still <laughs> have it. But, but the, but the situation is, is that the motion already started. Yeah. Well, you've like already the, put that out there. You've already right, started working on it. Right. And, and, and the whole thing is, is that how, how can I say this where, where it would be um, interestingly clear that the love that I, I guess this is the best way to explain how something works and doesn't work. And, and I'm, and I'm even being a high priest, I'm, I'm still, you know, I don't really do spell crafting and, and conjuring. I don't usually, I usually do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm beginning to understand that love has a very, very big role mm -hmm. and how much but you look care, how strong that is. Yeah. You know, and how much you care about the person, their situation, Mm -hmm. And I mean, it could go both ways, you know, good or evil, light or dark, right. but, right. but, it, but it's a situation to where, I mean, look at your journey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at the way that you've walked your life. Mm -hmm. All right. 
it's very, very difficult to, and I'm going to say this for everybody, it's extremely difficult to change the ideology of someone who is Christian-based, mm-hmm. mono, monotheistic, okay, yes. meaning one, you know, one God-based, God. mm-hmm. to now knowing that there are a multitude of, you know, of gods. You know, I also work with angels, too, mm-hmm. and... It doesn't mean I'm Christian or Catholic. It just means that, you know, I do believe in angels. I ha- I've i had right. experiences with angels before, okay? Right. And I know that they're there. I, I, I mean, me personally, I believe oh, yeah. in it, okay? Oh, yeah. But the, the situation is, again, mm-hmm. we always come into this very tough, controversial ideology that if, if there is a higher power, mm-hmm which I don't know, I don't say if anymore. I know that there is you know. something sh- much stronger than any of us on this planet could right. possibly imagine, okay? And there, there is a power, there is an essence, there is a consciousness, there, yes. there is, there's, I something. Even, there's something, okay? There is something, and we can't necessarily put our finger on it or actually say what it is. Right. Um, I mean, we can, yes. go, we, can go <laughs> as flu- we can go as fluid as saying in a polytheistic, sense of you know sarah Gwen, carnonos Pan, uh you know uh freya you know all these things you know ants uh you know undine sylphs nymphs okay all these things i, I know i i could talk about this stuff all day long but we have a limited amount of time i'm like so, you <laughs> I, I really can't and mm-hmm. but the thing is is that believing is seeing and seeing is believing yes i agree on both sides yes have I seen fairies? Yes. Yes. Uh, have I seen brownies? I swear on everything that's holy in this world. Okay. I have legit seen little Same freaking thing. people, okay, w- running around doing stuff. Mm-hmm. You can feel weird, like weird mm-hmm. pains, like something throw a rock at you uh, and there's nothing around. I mean, it could be spirit. It could be them. It, it, there's, mm-hmm. there's so many things that humanity and I'm taking this as a race goes, not yes. color, not color of skin race, no. but, but the human race. Human race. Okay. Yes. There's a lot of things that's been hidden from us mm-hmm. that we're just now opening ourselves up to. Yes, I agree with that. And as our perception grows. Mm-hmm. So will our experiences. Exactly, of course. Okay, and I love and I love talking about this, but we we got to get back. We got to get back on track, you know, <laughs> with your story. But what I'm saying is, you you talked about you know getting to the point. You know, you're talking about conjuring. You're talking about what you've learned, mm-hmm. and you know some experiences with students, which is great. It's mm-hmm. great. It's great for people to know these things. It really is. It's massively important. For people to know that even if you are learning, whether it's by yourself or, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, with someone, with a mentor, with a teacher, or, you know, a a group in a class or or something, Mm -hmm. um, that again, you're not alone. Yeah. You're you're not alone. That's the first thing to remember is you're not alone. If you only take two things from this, one, you are not alone. Right. At all. You are not alone at all. Okay. There are so many people out there. And fine, I, I, I'll add a third one to this. Okay, uh-huh. I, I know I love to get my two cents in. Um, I'm a Scorpio. But, <laughs> but the second I would always say is fine. If you're having a hard time, find someone who went through it already. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and learn from that person. My, my biggest thing besides the you're not alone, I would say my number two rule is no question is stupid. Yes. Yes. Do not yes. feel like, well, I should know this. Why? Have do you, you know? Do you know? Before? I've actually, and I am admittedly saying this with mm-hmm. both both hands to the higher power. Mm-hmm. Okay, I am saying this, and most people that come to me that either get a reading, okay, mm-hmm. or do mentoring or coaching or training. Mm-hmm. The one thing that is absolute across the board with all of them mm-hmm. is. The words like, well, I don't know if you're going to think this is crazy or. I get that a lot. You know, I'm not sure if I should tell you this. Yes. 
Be open with these people that exactly. are trying to teach you. Okay, be open. We're not going to know if you don't tell us. Right. Um, and, and we and each teacher hasn't been through everything. No. I mean, but if they don't, that's why we have what we call, well, at least I call it, a soul tribe. Okay, mm -hmm. a group of people that a circle of, of gifted yes. people that your teachers that we go to mentor, right that even I go to even people that are younger than me may know a, a lot more about one subject or another right but you right. have I'm the to, same way but you have to pick okay you have to pick what you want to be best at yes okay and that's yes. the key like I love ascension okay mm -hmm. I love ascension I love growth I yes. love dealing with the soul, the spirit. Okay, yes. it, you know, uh, bringing your power back, integrating with your divine feminine. Okay, yes. that's, that's a that's a big one. Yeah, you know, divine masculine. Okay, yes. stuff like that. And finally, living a life conducive to higher vibration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, especially in the power and you know, which are great books. The the power and. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, what was the, oh shoot, the, I know the power is the second one, um, but uh, what, what was the first one? I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, it was the power and I don't know, but anyway, they know, they know what I'm talking about. If anybody here sees us on YouTube or whatever, comment below, let, you know, let, uh, let us know which one it was. Um, but here we all take from this too, that all of us walk a journey mm -hmm. all of us yes all of us have our pitfalls and follies you know we can call it trials and tribulations you we can mm -hmm. say lessons to be learned okay right. or i mean you can whichever way you slice it it's still a journey regardless yes yes okay um it's just some people are really stubborn about the way that they word it <laughs> yep. Okay. And then you say, no, it's a journey. No, it's trials and tribulations. No, it's less It's, all it's whatever same. you call it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's whatever it truth. is to you. Right. Exactly. Your truth. Seven hermetic laws. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the seven hermetic laws, it says all, one of the laws, uh, one of the principles, okay, is it, it always says all truths are but half truths. Mm hmm. And in order to explain it is very, very simple. Mm -hmm. What you believe in is your truth. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's somebody else's belief. Exactly. That's exactly. Simple. That's simple. And honestly, that, that idea right there is what got me on my path. On your path, right. Because what was working for everyone else in that church, what seemed to be working, was not working for me. And the same thing went for me too. I was sitting at the rock church and I'll say it. I don't even know if it's still, uh, you know, if it's still standing, I have no clue, but when this, this was like 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I was sitting in church, I was looking around and I was listening to these hymns and said, the songs are great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love, right. I love the hymns and stuff, but the same thing with, you know, the pagan, you know, you know, obviously, oh man, I got, I lost it on the top of my head. I love the, I love the big <laughs> song. The one song that, you know, air is my breath. You know, yes. Earth is my, you know, earth is my body. Earth is my body. You know, yeah. um, and, and all that. F fire, fire is my spirit. soul. Yeah. Fire cool. is my yeah. spirit. Yeah. Um, you know, which is a big one. I mean, oh, every time I hear that, it's like, oh my God, I feel like, 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 hot, like hyperactive because, energy. Because it's, it's what, it's, it's, it's what we are. It is. It really, really is. It and, really is. Yeah. And the more, and the more time that there are individuals walking this journey, mm -hmm. um, the more times I see a lot of, uh, and I'm, and I'm going to say this, and if I'm deliberately incorrect, that's totally fine. I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay. I, I've learned as a Scorpio, it's okay to be wrong. Okay. okay. Canada has actually deemed the Catholic Archdiocese a criminal organization. Okay. And I'm going to say this because I read it. Okay. Yeah. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's okay. But that's okay. what I read. Um, and I was in awe. I was yeah. in shock. Yeah. I said, holy crap. Yeah. I was like, where, what, what the hell? I'm like, yeah. where is this world going to? Mm -hmm. And, and the more I see, and I love seeing this, I really, really do. I love seeing people, 
promoting, not for money per se, but promoting and being an advocate for the human change. Yeah. Cleaning, you know, cleaning the oceans. Yeah. Reforestation, not deforestation, but reforestation. Okay, like the stuff that's happening in Brazil and Peru and, you know, and all these things. People are planting millions and millions of trees to, to try to, like, reverse the damage that, we, that we've, you know, that we've created, which right. can very well be done. It, it can be. You know, over right. time, it, 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 it possibly will work. Right. But the one thing that we have to remember is that each one of our journeys are really not different. No, they're really not. It, no, they're it's not. Never unique because honestly, we all have to go through. We gifted people. I know I'm segregating us, but it, that's not the intention. Mm -hmm. We have to go through tragedy. Yes. Death. Yes. Harm. Yep. Okay. And extremes to hyperactivate. Mm -hmm one of the biggest hearts you could ever have mm -hmm. and and i'm a little tough okay i i may be stubborn i may be thick-headed at times and you know i'm very stern with certain you know certain guidelines and certain boundaries but you know yeah but the thing is is that ultimately my heart is really in in the in the best place it really right. is it really is and, and it's and i gotta say that i can feel yours mm-hmm Okay, just sitting here talking with you and talking mm -hmm. about your your path and you know what you do believe and you know what you you know what's your integrity and you know what is your guidelines in life and stuff like that. It's important for humanity to shift to yes. that. Yeah. Okay. The let's just be clear. Mm -hmm. The witch's Bible mm -hmm. guidelines. Okay? Yes. All 147, okay, plus, okay, rules or whatever, laws and bylaws that they mm -hmm. have, because I've seen mm -hmm. the ancient stuff from Lady Book of Shiva, um, which was incredible stuff. I mean, I was, whoa, I was like, I'm not going to remember all this stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, Bible, mm -hmm. guidelines, rules. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quran, guidelines, guidelines rules. rules. Okay. Um, druid texts, guidelines, you know, rules, all this stuff is based on, or at least gives us an idea of how we are supposed to live. Yeah. Cause if you look at them side by side, if you were to sit down and read them side by side, it may have different avenues. And a friend told me this one day, he said, right. it's kind of like a trip to California. We're all headed out there. We just take different routes. That's all. But the the actual the destination, destination. Yep. is the same and when he said that i thought that's brilliant and i used to have a store out at a local flea market here um my store was called the crooked broom right and i had I've heard of that actually hey yeah. that's I'm me Jer 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 jersey boy so oh wow okay <laughs> yeah. so not um, too far away <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but i had a sign up at tcb that actually said that um, there are many different paths, but we're all trying to get to the same destination. So please do not, do not put down anyone else's path in this store. I actually had uh, a couple of individuals that saw me on live video on mm -hmm. Facebook and they came to me in private, you know, private message. And they were mm -hmm. like, listen, I got, I got a couple of questions, but my biggest question to you was, why does it seem like you do a bunch of different things? You not just, you know, you got the hand, the praying hands and you put it up to your head. You know, you got the mom, you know, you got the mama mm -hmm. beads, you got the gemstones. You know, sometimes we see you wearing the, you know, the Reiki healing wheel. You do the, mm -hmm. the distance healing and all that, and all this stuff. And they're like, well, how is that okay? And I said, well, how is it not? Exactly. How, how is, is it not? Everybody has their own, I mean, certain things people find is okay for them. Mm -hmm. And look, I love Reiki. Okay. And mm -hmm. I say this in an Eastern societal practice, you know, verbiage, mm -hmm. um, not just Reiki, but it's Reiki. Mm -hmm. And 
once I did that, it helped me heal. Mm -hmm. It did. It helped me heal from trauma that, yeah, I mean, yeah. that was dated decades ago. Right. Okay. Right. And when I went into universal spiritualism, it helped me with like soul retrieval. Right. And, you know, activating the core centers of my DNA and, right. and being able to open up memory banks that I, I never knew I had. Right. And right. while you're on this journey, you have to remember that even if you get, I know railroaded isn't necessarily the, the way I call it redirected. Mm hmm. Okay, but side, but kind of side swiped or, you know, again, redirected, you know, changing mm -hmm. directions in the fork of the mm -hmm. road. Um, mm -hmm. It's always true to know that your life doesn't have to be just that one direction. Right. Okay, because in order for self-mastery, and, I, and I, I don't know if you you know, if you can agree, but mm -hmm. within, when, within self mastery standpoint, you got to be open, right? You have to be open to whatever works for you. Right. And you're not going to know unless you try it out. Exactly. Just because the first thing, well, you know, it didn't really settle with me. Well, okay. Then look for something else. I'll be honest with you. When I, when I first started, um, I did something during, after my very last ascension, and I'm mm -hmm. sharing this with people just as an edu educational standpoint is that after my very last ascension, I started doing sigils, mm -hmm. handled symbols, mm -hmm. the ancient symbols. Where that came from, I have absolutely no clue. Okay, mm -hmm. no clue, but it came from somewhere. Right. right. And as I'm doing this, mm -hmm. I started like evolving. Yes. And the more that I did something, the more I grew. Yeah. And I, and, well, I mean, that happened throughout the entire journey, of course. Right. But it, it's better, I would say, you know, to those newbies, okay, mm -hmm. to those newly awakened people mm -hmm. um, that are just starting, that you're going to experience a whole lot of stuff. Okay. okay. You're going yeah. <laughs> to, you're going to experience stuff that's going to be totally weird that, that you're going to say, uh, that's a big word too that's used okay for new people this is weird this is a weird feeling you know this is really weird that this happened in my dream you know or whatever the case is it's not weird no it's a lot of weird. people come to me and, and they'll say you know you're gonna think i'm crazy or this sounds insane right. and i'm like hit me and i'll tell people uh -huh. there's very few things that can shock me now seriously because right. right. i, I you get it. Through a lot. We've heard a lot. Yeah. Yep. We've been through a lot. We've heard a lot. We've seen a lot. Um, we've counseled people through a lot. There's very exactly. little that other people can say that is going to shock me. Um, sometimes uh, someone will say something and I'll think I've heard it all. And then I think, whoa, didn't hear that before. I'll take a second to collect myself. I'm not judging them. I'm not going to judge them, especially when someone's talking to me in confidence. That's, that's the, who they are. I'm not going to judge them for that. And that's the, you, you said that one word, that one word. What, judge? Yes. Yeah. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, as human beings over a millennia, mm -hmm. okay, we as a human race have been programmed Mm -hmm. to be judgmental yes okay we've been programmed to have ego right we're all ego gets us in so much trouble ego you're never i uh, will say this and i know a lot of people say never say never but you but i do believe deeply that you will never really get rid of ego no nah. because it's actually part of our dna Right. Um, it is part of uh, our survival mode and survival instincts. Right. To, to really have self-worth and, you know, to, to believe in ourselves, to love ourselves. And yes, that is a form of ego. Right. Um, but what I mean by this is that there's a thin line between confidence and cockiness. 
Yes, yes. Okay, there's a thin line. Yes. And the thin line is humbleness, being yes. humble. Knowing and believing and even expressing yourself humbly, saying, yeah, you know what? I, I do know that I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, I do have skills in that. Mm -hmm. I may be an expert or something, you know, in mm -hmm. this specific, you know, mm -hmm. genre of something. Yeah. But, but yet, there's always, there's always something to learn. Oh, gosh, yeah. Always. And the hardest thing, again, is judging. And I, and I went through my cycle of, of judging and being still to this day being judged. Okay, yeah. still to this day, especially on social media. Yeah. Okay, of being judged. I love helping people. Yeah. I really, really do. I enjoy yes. it so much. But there is, and there's a big but, okay? And it's a, not a B-U-T-T, -T, okay? But a B-U-T, yeah. all right? That the people who think, and this is, this is kind of being judgmental a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? A little bit of ego, you know, sprinkled on there, you know, a mm -hmm. little, little dash of ego. But there are certain people that I have a hard time working with, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, some of the the older people that, I, that either I work with or that, you know, have lived the journey out longer than I have, mm -hmm. um, you know, actually say, well, you got to, you know, that's something that you have to work on. Well, I kind of disagree with that. I, I, I do too. And I, I disagree yeah. because first of all, if you're, if you're a realist, that's fine. Mm -hmm. If you're a skeptic, even better. Yeah. I love dealing with skeptics. Don't you do that? I really, really do. Yeah. Um, but it's the people who I call, and we all put words and titles on things and people and circumstances or whatever. Um, but I call them the blinded. Yes. Okay. I guess that word is like traveling like brush fire throughout our community, <laughs> which is the blinded, meaning not that you're blind. Right. Okay, but it just means that you are so freaking stubborn mm -hmm. that you're not open to another version of your perception. It, it, it may sound catty, snotty, whatever, but this is the way I look at this. Mm -hmm. For people that are like that, I have to sit back and think, wow, it must be great to be so positive Right. on how the world works right. that you cannot open up your mind and think of other possibilities. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for others. <laughs> I mean, I prefer to evolve and grow and that's going to come with experiencing different things, opening my mind to different ideas, different thoughts and practices. In that way, I will adapt and I will become the best version of me that I can be this go round. I love that. And you know what? A big shout out. I, I actually have this as a, as a featured uh, channel on my YouTube channel. So anybody who's mm -hmm. watching this is on YouTube. Okay. Um, Infinite Waters. Okay. Ralph Smart, you're the man. I'm sorry, but he always talks about the flow. He always, you know, he's always talking about, you know, diving deep, you know, going deep inside mm -hmm. of yourself and, and really, you know, really growing and becoming that best vibration. Right. And, and honestly, I didn't even know what that meant until about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I started vibrating, and I guess this is the law of attraction in a sense, mm -hmm. um, which is once you start vibrating higher, you're going to attract and more that. positive and more positively. Yeah. You know, I can walk into a situation and every, everybody feels shitty. And all of a sudden I start, you know, I start motivating and uplifting people. And then all of a yeah. sudden I walk out there like, Oh my God, thank you for coming by. Yeah. Thank you so much. You just so made my day. I love not because of ego, but I yeah. love hearing that because when we're able to help and assist people rise above. Now, I'm talking about every single human being on this earth can do this. Everybody yeah. can do this. No matter you just how have to make the decision to no do matter, it. No, right. And it's all about choice. Yes. But even as, as shitty as a day as you could possibly have, mm -hmm. the biggest challenge, and this is talking, we're talking about a journey here. Mm -hmm. okay? The biggest challenge is no matter what circumstance or situation you find yourself in to always remember that you're always in control. Yes. That you're always in control of yourself. 
Yes. Okay. Not a, not everything else. Not everybody else. Just you. Just you. Yes. And um, more and more and more people just think that they're trying to control situations and stop doing it. Yeah, and you just, can't. It's just going to bite you in the ass. To control yeah. the situation, you're going to have to control every thing, every one, yep. every aspect of that situation. I don't know anyone who can do that. Not even the creator or the higher power can do that. Right, because we have free will. Right. Wonderful, lovely thing, but gets us in trouble a lot, too. I'm a just lot. It <laughs> uh, gets us in so much trouble. But you can't control someone else's free will. You're not supposed to. That's what makes us human. And when we look into paganism and witchcraft, that's the one thing that we're not supposed to do. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Is manipulate free will. And exactly. Even if we try to do that, it's like going against gravity. Yes. I mean, it's just, it causes so much havoc and chaos. Yes. I mean, don't get and me if wrong. If you don't mind, I would like to interject with this for anybody. Yeah, that's sure. Listening. Um, when sure. we talk about not changing free will, again, to each his own, but I'm going to share this with you all. Free will includes love that someone has for you. Stop asking for love spells for someone. Stop saying, how can I make him love me? Sister, rise up. Embrace your inner goddess. Or brother. Know your <laughs> brother too. Know your value. Know your worth. Right. If you have to cast a love spell to get them, you don't need them. Now, I can inter, I guess, okay. add to that a little bit. Okay, please um, do. Because I don't, I've actually done love spells. Um, even, for, even for myself, when I, you know, early on when I was a newbie. Oh, that was the first one I did when I was 17. Yeah, I it, was, my yeah I, it, was, it was crazy stuff. Um, and that was actually the first time that I legit found one of my true loves i mean that's that was definitely something you know it was weird how it how it happened mm -hmm. um but it was not a manipulation of free will in any way um okay. what i actually a love spell no i say no. Right. um in a love energy influence mm -hmm. okay spell would be better off Mm -hmm. um to be open to love to be to you know to even show a majority of these people and i don't know if you can agree with me on this but what i see is that a majority of those people looking for love spells aren't really loving themselves in the first place exactly exactly and what i'll do is i'll try and steer if someone comes to me and says i want you to do a love spell and i'm like well you know what i don't do those um and I get a lot of people that wanted to argue with me. Well, so and so will do a love spell. No, 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 no. And then I would end up losing them, which That's fine. when I lost them, it was now they're going to go do it the wrong way. Right. So and it's going to be an entirely off. different intention at that point. That's going to yeah. be survival, yeah. like, like this, like, uh, what is it? Extreme, not desire, but obsession. Yes. Um, so what I do now. It's when someone comes to me, then I start counseling, whether they realize that's what I'm doing or not. I'm counseling. I do that on too. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then uh, we get to a point where I'll say, okay, if you want me to do a love spell, I'll do for self-love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or I can teach you how to self-love. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And trust and honestly, me, we're not, you know, we're not just talking for about self -love, makeup. I want to clarify this. Um, can I make someone love themselves? Yes. Is it going to be my magic that does it? Maybe in a sense, but you know how I do it? By showing them their value and worth. Yes. And allowing them to see that, yes, they are worthy of love. We're all worthy of love. We are all, I don't care what anyone says, this is my personal opinion, take it or leave it. Our sole purpose on this earth is to become the best absolute versions of ourselves. Right. Okay. And the best That's version, and the best version isn't easy to get to. No, it's like, not. Right. It can take us, honestly, it can take us lifetimes, too. I mean, um, I'm 41, and I'm still going through self-mastery. And honestly, I guess what I can share with everybody is that, especially to those that have anger issues, mm -hmm. um, I, too, at one point had some anger issues. Um, I was the type that would punch holes in walls and you know break things and 
you know, it's even to today, I mean, even, you know, not today specifically, but even to this day, I, I still have a hard time with, um, you know, becoming, beginning uh, an argumentative conversation and uh, based on my own beliefs, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a circumstance where you have to look really deep and there's a lot of acceptance that's needed. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to those, not tolerance, but acceptance, acceptance, um, acceptance that uh, I guess one of the biggest things is what my mom used to say is, and she still says it even to the grandkids, to be honest. Um, she still says that the world doesn't revolve around you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I and it's interesting. I, I mean, it's so interesting that now after all this time, like looking, looking upon what she says and I'm like, yeah, you know, you, really, the world doesn't revolve around you. Um, your choices, your environment, and what and what you, you know, what you decide to live with, mm -hmm. um, is based, like you said, it's based on choice. I mean, that's that's yeah. where it all boils down to is just choice. Okay, you choose who you you know who you're in love with. You choose who you marry. You choose, you know, you choose your friends. You choose where to go, what mm -hmm. to eat you know, what to listen to, what to watch. Okay. And, and, and again, it's, um, it's a circumstance, a situation where our, our humanity is, we're growing into a, a, like this self-sabotaging sort of uh, global community. Mm-hmm. And but then look at how much negativity we're faced with. Well, that's days. what, yeah. That, that's also something too. And what I would love to see, and I'm not being political, I'll just say this one thing, that I would love to see a spiritual person, uh, an actual, like a universally spiritual person, or even a pagan, or, or you know, or a, a high priest, or, you know, or a high, high priestess, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, as president. I would love to see something like that and see how that would totally change the whole matrix of, of, of this whole country. Okay, we're not talking the world, we're just talking the country itself. Yes, but then um, that changes the world because it causes right. that ripple effect. Right. And then look what happens. Right. It would be, I mean, there's It would be no totally different. Why, yeah, it would. There's no reason why society, the world, mankind, however, whatever you want to put on it, there's no reason why we can't live a much more... Harmonious lifestyle. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and it's sad. Um, I'm, right. a, I'm an author, okay, also, and I'm, yeah. cool. I have a book that I'm writing. It's not done yet. Cool. Good but for you. It's all about a, the pagan change that many of us see coming. Right. And going back to a simpler time. We're going, um, a lot of us are beginning to, and including myself, mm -hmm. um, I'm not considering myself pagan or, or pretty much a witch anymore. I'm pretty mm -hmm. well to title on it. I am still a high priest, but, and, and also a minister, but it's a situation where I'm seeing a lot of people going back yes to like the old yes. ways yes yes the ancient ways um yes. of doing the craft and i'm seeing like this super it's an amazing trend i think it's great mm -hmm. um it's it's a really big spiritual trend where a lot of people are like getting stones and incense and you know mm -hmm. and really getting into the music of the drums and you know yes. and the, and the oh, mudras good. and the mantras you know yes if we can get I'm seeing a big IF. Okay, if mm -hmm. we can get the the, the younger generations mm -hmm. to get into this stuff, this is not based on control, folks. This is based mm -hmm. on a more fluid understanding of our own race. Yeah. Okay. I love uh, the uh, what is it the uh, the cleaner ocean project or what you know that yeah. that's that's the big one. Okay, that I just saw it on Ellen Ellen DeGeneres. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, "Holy crap!" I, I was reading about these guys before they were before they got huge, right? Okay, just their ideas, and, right? And you know, cleaning up the oceans, and uh, you know, dealing with the endangered species, and you know, uh, bees specifically. Oh, guys, yeah. stop killing the fucking bees! I'm sorry, okay. but yeah, but I'm serious because of pollination and, and reforestation, and you know, and all and all these great things that the bees, yeah. you know, help. help but without civilization will 
eventually cease eventually to exist. Cease, cease to exist right people don't realize how serious it is and it and, is extremely serious and um, it's it, it's a global America. problem though it's a, it's a global problem it is and, and what we have to do is and this is where we bring into the coexist okay we have to get to get, look again i'm going to give this to y'all all right i I thought moving to Alabama, okay, and I don't care if you got, you get, you know, whatever, I'm going to give you guys my location. I really don't give a shit, okay, because I'm all out, out to help people. Moving to Alabama, I thought was going to show me a side of humanity, like the Southern hospitality, you know, the, um, the respect, okay, like the respect that we, that I used to grow up with you know, with, you know, having respect for your elders and your teachers and, you know, all of a sudden, man, the first year I was here, I said, holy crap. It is the total opposite. Yeah. I legit, I was in line um, at, at a Dollar General. Mm -hmm. okay, I was in line at a Dollar General. I had an elderly woman and looks she looked like to be like her late sixties, maybe early seventies, um, just from you know for face value, right? And man, I saw her just fiddling in in her change purse, and I I, I talk about this all the time because it's mm -hmm. it's such an impactful experience, right? Where she's fiddling around in her change purse, mind you, I only got I only got like twenty five bucks in my account. This is when I was really having a hard time with like abundance and you know manifestation and the flow. Um, and all, I looked at this lady and I was just, I was just listening when I, before I walked in, I was listening to a, a motivational speech about abundance, giving back, um, mm -hmm. you know, getting back, you know, chivalry isn't dead, you know, all, all these things. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the lady and I said, I I'm sorry, miss. She looked at my man. As soon as I said that, she looked at me in fear. Like I was looking to steal from her or something. And I was like. Well, I, I, I was like, hang on, honey. I was like, all I did, I took my card and I swiped my, I paid for whatever she had, whatever she had. Mm -hmm. And it was like nine, 10 bucks or something. Right. And as she waited for me to finish, to finish getting, you know, rung up. There we go. Trying to use the correct grammar. Mm -hmm. um, and she looks at me, she goes, son, that's the first time I've ever experienced chivalry. And I'm like, what? She goes, in my whole 68 years of living, I've not experienced it until now. And I said, whoa. Um, she goes, you just gave me hope, hope. In, in like humanity. Yeah. And I was like, why is it so hard for people that one little I mean, thing that you did that you thought was no big deal i mean you were just going to help out an elderly woman you were I, being i second guessed it to be honest i didn't even want to do it i really didn't i didn't think that i was going to get anything in return you know which was a big ego thing you know yeah. in, in the beginning of it and i was like you know what if i help her yeah, you get. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get helped in some way, shape, or form. So you know, I yeah. I started getting that minds, you know, that right. mindset of give. You know, giving back is right. getting back. When we moved to Delaware, I mean, um, and it, yeah. it, it it put me in tears. Honestly, I, it, I, it, bet, did. It I did. bet. When we moved to Delaware in July, um, the house that we had lined up with a roommate fell through. The roommate come to find out there was a bunch of. Uh, uh, untruths told to us mm -hmm. we ended up getting up here in no place and we lived yeah. for six days in the woods up in newark oh, that's pretty cool. um oh, oh um i got on facebook and when we had first planned on moving up here uh i had joined a couple of pagan groups from the delaware area right so i'm in the, the woods um very little internet access um, it's very limited and it was only at certain times. So I get online and I start posting in these groups. Does anyone know where we could camp? Okay. We don't have much money, but is there a place that we can camp? 
Right. And just trying to put feelers out there. And this complete stranger sends me a message and she says, look, you don't know me. I don't know you. I can't come get you. I'm in Felton, but I've got a place you can crash for a while. Um, didn't have a wake. We didn't have a car. We, somebody brought us up and literally dumped us where we were at and went back to South Carolina. Wow. Um, and I, you know, I don't know, I don't have a way. So I'm on my, on, on this, this Facebook group again, and I put a message out there and this woman had been following my story for a week. And when she realized we were sleeping in the woods, she didn't realize this before when she realized we were sleeping in the woods, cause I'm not a spring chick anymore. I'm 48 years old. Right. My body is ate up with arthritis and fibro. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of hard living like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, even if you don't have it <laughs> and this, this woman pops up and she's like you know I didn't realize that you were sleeping in the woods um, I'm going to come pick you up this evening where can I take you complete strangers who did not know us who did not ask for a dime who when she stopped to get gas because it was a, almost an hour drive from where we were to where we were going right. she stopped to get gas I was like here I've got gas I I'll pay for for the gas and I went in and paid for $20 and I came back out. And when the woman realized I'd paid her $20, she turns around and gives me $10 back. Cause she said 20 was entirely too much for that right. short job. Right. And then she turns around and gifts me and my husband with a little gemstone, each of us a gemstone. Now my spirit animal is cats. It's exotic cats, domestic right. cats, cats. It doesn't matter. And she gave me a white cat's eye. Now that's rare. Okay. Yeah. A white cat's eye is very, very rare. Yes. Um, what's interesting about that story mm -hmm. is that, and I guess that's just the whole reason why I guess we came together mm -hmm. and, you know, is doing the show mm -hmm. is that there are, it, it, there shouldn't be a very select few people out there mm -hmm. that have enough heart right to help right um but due to the fact that this society specifically in the united states mm -hmm. um there is a lot of um i guess it's pretty much everywhere but you know i'm saying united states solely uh, there's a lot of violence there's a lot of kidnappings there's a lot of you know child you know i will just human trafficking not just ch not just children um, and there's a lot of, you know, murders and, and robberies and, uh, you know, and things. It all boils, that stuff all boils down to intuition, you know, going with your gut instinct. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it comes to people that really need it, mm -hmm. I gotta say, <laughs> and I'm going to say this as unfiltered as I can. Okay. Just fucking help them. Exactly. I mean, I, I have legit had $10 to my name mm -hmm. and, and, bought, and bought somebody lunch that was, that was part of the construction crew across the street where they're building a big plaza and it was like 105 degrees outside. Right. And, and, and I was like, oh, you got to be kidding. Like this guy swiped his chime card and I don't know, he had some kind of problem with his chime card. And, and I was like, bro, wait, you, I saw his vest. I mean, you could tell right away that he was, you know, part of the crew. Right. And right. I was like, wait, you, you working across the street? He goes, yeah. I said, this is your lunch break? He goes, yeah. I said, and that's what you're getting? Mm -hmm. You're going to eat shit? Like crap food? Yeah. Are you kidding me? And you're working outside? Hang on. I grabbed him two, two power aids. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I mean, trust me, two power aids for somebody who's wor working outside. That goes real quick oh, yeah. okay oh yeah and also you know a couple of snacks you know protein you know protein snacks to keep you moving almonds stuff like that and, and i got him he goes bro why are you doing this and i'm almost like really are you gonna ask me yeah because i think as humans we're so conditioned that we don't do that now no, we are so conditioned not to take from people that's exactly. that, you know not to accept not to accept what are they wanting 
What are they up to? Yeah, are, are they ulterior motive kind of stuff? Yeah, that's a big problem, too, in helping people that I think um, bothers some. Is, is Social media is swamped, okay, with people who just take advantage of other yes. people. Yes, Okay, I've legit seen, seen somebody post, I'm not going to mention any names whatsoever. Okay. okay. Say, well, they can't even say this anyway, but post in a group to get food mm -hmm. and then later on that night order pizza yeah yeah you see that and i was like Whoa. I'm gonna tell you, when we were living in the woods um i went walking the first night we were there or the second night we were there and i saw a homeless couple and I said, it was, it's Newark, uh, Delaware is a college town. Right. So you got a lot of your college students there yeah. and they were walking by and completely oblivious to these people. Now I, I had never experienced not having a home until then. And I kind of felt like it may sound cheesy or any something, but I kind of felt like she's my people, you know, I'm one of them now. And so I walked over to her and I, I said, ma'am, um, do you mind if I, I ask you a question? And she looked like I was going to say something bad to her. And I said, I explained our situation. And I said, I'm just trying to find this, this item at a store. Do you know where I could go? And she said, well, sweetie, there's a Dollar Tree across the parking lot here. I'll walk with you. For the entire week with it, we were there. Every day I checked on this woman. Right. She and her husband were there. Right. She kind of showed me the ropes. And... We honestly, we ran out of food up there. There was a couple of, we, we got by on uh, each of us having a granola bar each day for about two days. And on Saturday, which was our last day there, we had walked into town. We didn't know it was our last day. Um, we had walked up the hill into the town area and I was going to try and do some readings just for loved offerings, you know. Okay. For like donations. Yeah. yeah, for donations. Right. And she, she, we were sitting in Starbucks because that's where you could get free Wi-Fi. So right. I'm on the phone trying to get a hold of someone, texting. I had the laptop up there texting. And she came in and she said, can you step outside for a minute? Now, I had just thought, I almost feel like I am going to be sick. I am so hungry. And, you know, I'm a big woman. I got room that I can go a little bit without a meal or two, but still. Right. A granola bar for two days. It does. It, that doesn't last a long time. No. And, uh, but I was, I wouldn't say anything. And she, she asked me to step outside Starbucks. And so we're, I'm, I'm standing there and I'm thinking, God, what did I do? What's happened? And she said, honey, are you hungry? And I looked at her and yeah. she said, answer me. Be honest. Do not yeah. lie. Are you hungry? And I was like, yes, ma'am. And she said, okay. She said, now look. I can't go in here to Panera Bread anymore, but I've got a gift card. It's for $20, and I would love one of those cinnamon rolls. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this card, and I want you to go over there, and I want you to eat lunch. And when you're done, I want you to bring me a cinnamon roll. That's all I ask. I do not want the card back, and there better not be anything left on it. See, a in, homeless woman. In, in, order, in order for us... And, and I and I love this part because I'm actually going to separate this. I'm going to separate this video in half hour chunks. Um, okay. But this part of the show is mm -hmm. what I love the most. Mm -hmm. Is that manifestation and abundance? And I've legit actually helped somebody go from being homeless to, you know, to having their own place, their own car you know, and all that stuff. And, and they still thank me still to this day. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they were like, I don't even know how you did it, but you, you just did. And I did it freely. I didn't even ask for nothing for it. Right. Um, you know, I just did it out of the kindness of my own heart and as it should be done, don't be doing these things thinking y'all got a way into heaven. Y'all. Right. Right. I'm um, just saying. I mean, I do thousands of dollars of stuff for like mm -hmm. free, which is not, which is not a problem. I'm not going to complain about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that I, sometimes I even miss doing what I do, <laughs> honestly, because I love giving back. If you feel led to do it, do it. Yeah. I used and to give a good chunk of my merchandise away at the store. Well, what happens is that with manifestation and abundance, 
um, it, what's funny about it is that if you're at any time, if you don't believe in it, mm -hmm. it's not going to work for you. Right. And at any time, like I've legit have had my bill do like, let's say a, like a $168 electric bill, mm -hmm. okay, close to $200 electric bill do within like three days. Mm -hmm. Have like 50 bucks in my account. Right. Biting my nails, wondering where the heck am I going to get this money? Because right. honestly, here in this complex, I'm sharing some of my personal stuff with you guys too, because honestly, don't think that it's just you. Okay. Right. I mean, I get any one of my utilities shut off here. I'm thrown out. Right. Okay. Whether it be gas or electric. So I have to always make sure that I have those utilities on at all times. Right. Okay? No matter how, how expensive it is. Right. Right. Now, this experience was awesome. And I'm going to share this because even at the last minute mm -hmm. or the last day of when something is due, as long as you have a way to generate income, and I'm going to say this for everybody, it doesn't matter if you're a jewelry maker, a reader, a medium, a coach, an entrepreneur, you know, it doesn't matter what you are. Okay, even a person who's working for a company, okay, mm -hmm. working for a company like retail or sales, marketing, whatever, okay, right. it doesn't matter what your occupation is. If you have a secondary source, and this is what I tell everybody, if you have a secondary way of creating and generating income, and as long as you do the work, the universe is going to take care of you, mm -hmm. no matter what that means. You can't just give up. That's right. the point. Okay, a lot of people are like, oh, it's the last day. I'm not going to make it. I've legitimately made $450 in one day, mm -hmm. paid off all my bills within one day for that mm -hmm. month, and was so grateful. I was like, and you know what? As soon as you, well, some people, when they see a, a, like a decent amount coming in, Mm -hmm. they're, they're always like, well, all right, I want this. I want this. I want this. No, look at what you absolutely have to have. Mm -hmm. Okay. And see that, 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 that compensation, that exchange is for you to be okay. Right. You know, right. for you to continue doing what you're doing. Right. And we're going to, we're probably going to have a conversation after this, you know, we're, we're going to go momentarily. Okay. Um, but what I want to share with everybody is that your life, and I say this to, in the beginning to all my students, okay, all my students, all my clients, is that your reality, your life, is based on three very simple things. And as long as you know these three things, mm -hmm. you're going to get ahead. Okay, you're, you're going to definitely get ahead. Okay. So the first thing is what you put your time and energy into. Mm -hmm. okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is what you believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you believe. The third is, again, has to do with exchange, all right, is a balance of giving and accepting to receive. Yes. Because... Yeah. If you don't have that balance, okay, because I see a lot, okay, I, hello, people just listen up, folks, okay, when somebody offers to do something for you, stop thinking that you're going to put somebody out. Yeah. That's exchange, ladies and gentlemen. And don't rob them of their blessing. Right. They're actually creating manifestation and abundance in their life by offering you something. Okay. So don't, don't, yeah, don't rain on their blessing. Yeah, and the thing is, Step is that be grateful. Be not only pose gratitude, uh -huh. but be able to be open mm -hmm. to seeing the opportunity mm -hmm. to pay it forward. Yes. Okay. All yes. sees that opportunity, no matter how questionable it may be. Okay, no matter how afraid you are, 
because right now we are doing something that's brilliant. This whole entire show, this one episode is going to change the lives of people. Okay, it is. Okay, it's going to change the lives. But the biggest thing about change is that we have to accept that even though we think that we're not afraid, okay, we are actually stopping ourselves because of being afraid to either take from somebody, you know, to put them out, or that they don't have enough, okay, to give, even though they want to give. And we're really, like you said, and I'm agreeing with it 100%, absolute 100, boom, 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 100%. That if you tell them no, you're stopping them from manifesting their abundance. Yes. yes. Okay. And now look what you've done. Okay. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's just going to go downhill from there. Yeah. Okay. It's just going to Not only spiral. are you doing without that blessing coming to you, which means now you're doing without something, but the person who is manifesting great things in their life, a better life, a better situation, you just squash them. It's, a, it's a, just a circle. That's yeah. all it is. It's a circle of energy. And that's the only way I know I'm, uh, this is being ambidextrous with me doing the circle, <laughs> you know, both, both ways. But what I'm saying is people are going to be like, how did you do that? Um, <laughs> but, but the circle. Can I remember you at home trying it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I can, I used to be able to do it even when I was a kid. Um, both sides of my brain work, work at the same time at some points. But it, when you stop yourself from giving up on humanity that's when the real miracles are going to happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean seriously right now i'm um, like right now we're working on a project i call it the global oh shoot i don't even remember what it's called honestly it's because i don't talk about it a lot uh-huh um It's uh, called the oh, hang on. the glo okay global holiday giving back program. Okay. And what what this program is, and I'm charging full price for services, and there's a reason behind why. Mm -hmm. Okay, that it's to it's to feed hungry people. Oh. Okay, it's to feed hungry families. Last year we helped two families, two right. families of, of four and above. Mm -hmm. for thanksgiving yeah okay and trust me when we did that man we felt so good we were like ah oh. and, we, we, and when we sat down for our meal we were like oh we had so much gratitude mm -hmm. okay to say wow we're sitting here with those, and knowing that those two families are sitting there too because you made a change you know and being able to do that you made a wonderful change in the world. For, absolutely. And, and every year we're, we're attempting to do, you know, to feed more people. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, every year. You know, the free cycle sites that used to be on uh, uh, Yahoo, it'd be like yeah. free cycle, whatever. I became a moderator for the one in Anderson. And I had a lot of people uh, sending me emails one year about Christmas help. Right. And so I sat down and I thought about, it. I was the only a moderator of the group and I sat down and I thought about it and we came up with the program. Mm -hmm. And so I put out there, look, we're going to help people out for the holidays. We're going to have to use the honor system because right. I'm not going to be calling and checking your, your finances yeah. and all. Yeah. If you truly need help, send me the information, right. sizes, right. ages, names, blah, blah, blah. And we'll see what we can do. So it's clothing. Okay. Yeah, and I told him, you know, whatever we can get, I don't know what we're going to get, but whatever we can get, it's free cycle, so chances are it's going to be gently used, so you have to be okay yeah, with all Yeah, I mean, all. you can easily go to, like, yeah, you can go yeah, to the you know, and, or and, something and spend 20 bucks and get, like, a whole wardrobe for a kid. I mean, that. Oh, yeah. We ended up having 12 families Holy with crap. a total of 34 children between the 12 families. That's insane. Just wow. in gently well ma the majority was gently used but we did have people that did go out and buy some new buy stuff brand new or yeah. got new stuff during the mm -hmm. holiday season and donated at the last minute right um but we provided not just one or two little things we provided entire christmases for these children yep and every family was grateful i had a couple of the people that that donated come volunteer on give out day and we had one woman that came to pick up and she's looking around. She goes, well, 
I don't see a game in here for my kid. Well, there wasn't a game donated for him. I divvied up the way I could for families and, you know, they all got well, one big gift and little things around. And this, and this is what hurts me mm -hmm. is when beggars, that's all I'm going to call them, mm -hmm. okay, beggars expect. Yes. And, and I don't, I don't like that. Um, I don't like that because humanity has not been created that way. Mm -hmm. um, when uh, when we the very last family mm -hmm. that we that we helped uh, during the Thanksgiving holiday last year, uh, the lady ended up adding me on Facebook, mm -hmm. giving me photos of the meal. Right. It was her. It was her grandmother that she mm -hmm. could not afford to buy food for her grandma, and I, I, I actually, when I read the post, mm -hmm. just tears flowing, like, oh my god! I imagine. Like I thought that. I mean, they had a decent car. They dress, you know, they dressed nice. Mm -hmm. And I thought I already assumed I was like, yeah, it's probably one of these families that are that say that they're struggling and they're not, and they, right. know, they just want the free meal. No, that right. wasn't even the case. My assumption kicked me in the ass so quickly. I was like, holy shit! Yeah. Okay. I said, you know what? I really love seeing that. Mm -hmm. You know. And it's sad though, because I mean, here you know the um, the the food drive program that, that we're doing now. I, I you know I ran it for a week already, and I have not got one donation yet. Not uh. one. Even in this apartment complex of seventy two units, mm -hmm. okay, there was a flyer that went around for the help feeding families. Not right. one donation in a whole week. Well, I just want to say, anyone watching this video, if you are in the position that you can help, do it, do it. Program. Speaking okay, just from do the experience it. of being homeless in the past, of going without, you can change someone's even world. even ten dollars could could, could and if a five or ten dollars can give someone fixings. Right. You no, know, enough to make uh, like a green bean, a green bean casserole, or right. or get the stuff to make an apple or a pumpkin pie, or or something that they're not able to do for themselves. Right. Right. And that and that's, a lot of people forget that during the holidays, they're enjoying their their family. Um, I've had holidays where I've been stuck at home, doing nothing. Yep. There was no presents. There was no uh, dinner. There was nothing like that they can be sad and depressing when that happens because you Absolutely. know the rest of of your family or friends are out enjoying yep. and you see all these pictures on partying Facebook partying or or what you yeah. know the night before or what, right. whatever the case is see the the crazy part of all that is that what, what I I don't like the greed right. I never I never have um I never have when it came to this human race right and a lot of people a lot of parents and i'm going to say this being you know being a parent myself mm -hmm. um a lot of parents well maybe an absentee father but um, but still a father nonetheless mm -hmm. um what i see a lot of is raising kids to be ungrateful yes and and yes. also not teaching even themselves even the parents themselves not showing kindness Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. being all the about them gonna learn what you do for them they're going to learn through you and well yeah you, you obviously lead by example and, exactly. and and the situation is is that you know it, no filter here sorry folks um but being a shitty parent is going to end up have creating shitty children and yes. with creating shitty children is also going to build another generation of shitty children Okay, so what we have to do as our, you know, your generation, my generation, um, with being adults, 
and, and being parents as well as, you know, workers and entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and, you know, in store, you, you know, previous store owners and, mm -hmm. and things like that. We have to show that it's okay to be kind. It is. And it's worth it. It really yeah. is. I mean, I had so minor that you think, whether it be, let me buy you a cup of coffee, um, or if you're in the, the drive through line in the morning and you say, hey, you know, how much is this person's meal back here? I want to pay for it. It's so crazy that you bring this up because uh -huh. just day before yesterday, mm -hmm. I had, in same Dollar General, okay, mm -hmm. I had some guy rushing from, rushing from lunch. Okay, well, they're not, it wasn't the guy working across the street. It was somebody entirely different. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he's searching through his, like, through his pockets, counting change. And mm -hmm. I looked at this guy. I was like, sir, wh what's going on? El older gentleman, of course, you know, probably yeah. late 40s, early 50s, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hitting there too. Uh, but, you know, I asked him, I said, sir, I was like, what's going on? It's like, it's already everything okay here? And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm right behind him. And mm -hmm. he's like, yeah. He's like, my card's, all, all of a sudden I heard the register, uh, the cashier say, you know, your, sir, your card's declined. Mm -hmm. And I was like, are you? And I'm sorry, in my head and like in the line, like I looked behind me, I had like eight people behind me. Mm -hmm. Not one person said anything. Oh, yeah. Most you know, people won't. And I was and you like, know how humiliated he must have felt. And I, and I was like, hang on, sir, what are you sure? Like, what, what do you need? Mm -hmm. And he looked at me, he goes, oh, no, I got, I, no, I got this. I, I'll just figure out a way, you know, maybe I'll just, you know, give back. To, you know, his granddaughter with him. Okay, mind you. And I, and I was looking at this girl, I'm looking at this girl, she looked at me and she was like, looking at me puzzled. And, and like, like, what is this guy going to do? Yeah. He, all of a sudden, I said, can you just step aside for a second? Took my card, swiped my card, and didn't even know how, how much, you know, he needed. It could have been yeah. $8, $10, $5, whatever. Right. And he didn't have many items. So all of a sudden, he, he like, with this puzzling look on his face, like, what? Yeah. He's like, you don't know me. I said, do I care? <laughs> And it was like, and P, I, I, I said, nobody back here said anything. Mm -hmm. Seeing you with your granddaughter, obviously, knowing that uh, she wants to get out of the store, you know, right. uh, you know, she doesn't want to stick around in a store for too long, okay, because, she, you know, we all, well, children nowadays have the attention span of a split pea, okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know and saying and she's just you know she's starting to stomp her feet and getting antsy and, and i was like oh, right. really guys and, and i said it while i was getting rung up i was like really guys i mean y yeah. you can't you can't just extend the common courtesy of you know are you that fucking poor okay that you can't give a couple of bucks yeah okay to, to somebody with their granddaughter no, because you know that stuff only happens on those Hallmark Christmas movies now these days. And and the and the guy said he, he you know as we were because I didn't have many items either you know after I was rung up he go and he pulls me aside he goes thank you I'm like well, no problem man I was like I, I saw somebody in need and yeah I I helped them yeah. and and he was like you don't see this stuff around here. Yeah, like, you don't anymore. I'm like, it's the South. Are you kidding? No. Uh, I've legitimately seen people get into an argument at the line at the store because somebody forgot to go get something and tried to get back in their same spot. Mm -hmm. I'm like, are you really that freaking Is this that impatient? mentality of um, self, uh, self survival? Self, self survival, self worth. Yeah. I'm still recording. Um, so, yeah, that's... So, I know, we went on a tangent, folks. We, we, we get it. <laughs> um, you know, we apologize for the long-winded stuff, but obviously it's going to be split um, okay. within a specific amount of time. I think we did basically two hours. Oh, um, wow. But it, right now, the whole point of this episode is to share with you guys 
someone who I don't really know, mm -hmm. okay, someone mm -hmm. I don't really know, that is walking the same journey mm -hmm. as all of us. Yeah. As all of us. When I got started, that was one thing. I, when I really got active in the community, um, this is back when MySpace was real big. Yep. So this tells you how long ago it was. Meat market. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's a meat market. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've heard. But I was on MySpace and I was doing searches for local pagans. And there was like 900 and something names that would come up. So every week I'd do a new search. And each person I'd go on the list and request. Okay. And I got more and more emails back from people that said, I thought I was alone. And I thought, no, sweetie, you're not alone. We're just all quiet. And that was really what kind of drove me to get started was the fact that people felt that they were alone. And I hated that idea. Um, no, you're not alone. Know that there are other people out there. Ask questions, look for guidance, whatever it is, stay true to self. Not only that, but I'm gonna add to this and then we'll, then we'll hop to it. Okay. Um, when it comes to, I guess, just the ideology of, I mean, this is the time of year, obviously, you know, where we got Thanksgiving, we got Christmas, you know, we have Yule, we have, you know, obviously we're, we just got out of Samhain, mm -hmm. um, you know, on, on the, uh, the 4th or the 6th, uh, depending upon what tradition you are. Mm -hmm. um, we have to always remember that it doesn't necessarily always have to be during that holiday season. Right. It doesn't have to be. Right. Um, I notice that I notice it myself. Don't know about a lot of other people, but I notice it a lot of it myself that during the holiday season, specifically these, these two, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, there is two sides, mm -hmm. two sides to these holidays. It's the really arrogant, ignorant, um, pushy, self-centered side. And then there's the really open, giving, loving, you know, type of people. Imagine. And yes, yes. The That's miracle the workers. The magic of the season. Yeah, the man, the, 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 definitely, definitely the, the season of magic. It is. And... And miracles for that fact. It is. And we have to start bringing to the surface mm -hmm. this ideology all year around. Exactly. Don't let it wait till the, se the holiday season. Okay. And the more that we give, the more that we get back, the more that we share, the more it shows that we care. Yep. Okay. Um, and even if it's you feeling vulnerable mm -hmm. and I'm, and I know forcing ourselves to feel uncomfortable in order to grow, I know that verbatim in my life. <laughs> and even if it's uncomfortable to speak what's happened in your life, know that at any given moment, you could change a life. You can. You can J just with speaking your story. And it's okay if you never know, because you're not out there to do it for the gratification of, oh, I helped someone. No, no, it's never that like that. I have had people who have changed my perception of other people. I have people in my life, you know, the roommate that I live with now, you know, she's the one that let us move down here with her. Um, and I, I call her one of my angels. And she um, is. She is. She, she truly is. She opened up her home and she has become family to us. She is our family. Yeah. And I've told her this. Um, and, and I think we have that kind of relationship with each other. But one simple act of kindness changed our world completely. Um, for the better. For the better. I think there was a movie called Pay It Forward, if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, there was. There was. And I, I remember it being in tears. Oh, it was uh, it was a tearjerker, like ugly crying. Yeah, I mean the way the the way that how ugly people can be. Yes. Um, yeah. and how personally afraid 
people are when it comes to expressing their hearts. Mm -hmm. And I am going to say this, that I am in absolute awe and gratitude to be able to be here doing this recording, doing this show. Yes. And expressing ourselves in such a way that it is going to educate, hopefully, the younger generation right, uh, to become their best version. Yes. And I... You know, we're getting on up there in years, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need the younger generation yeah. to embrace their power, embrace their worth, step up, and make this world what you want it to be. Stop waiting for someone to do it for you. Get off your keister. Get it done. And stop thinking that that everybody owes you something. Yeah, no, nah, doesn't work that way. I would say this. It doesn't matter what type of life you lived. And I'm going to say this because I was in the military. Okay, mm -hmm. I went to Job Corps. I went to two colleges. Okay, so I've lived a, a lot of life. Okay, mm -hmm. been into drugs, violence, mm -hmm. um, gangs, you know, stuff like that. And honestly, I will say that once you shift your ideology and your mindset to that of service, mm -hmm. and this is not a Christian concept, it's just they, they use it a lot. Yes. Okay, um, because it's true. Mm -hmm. giving back is an amazing feeling mm -hmm. it's it makes you feel like you're contributing it's actually part of the five keys to living a positive and fluid lifestyle mm -hmm. okay on this world and give yourself beta test this and i'm and i'm sharing this with people for a reason beta test the two different scenarios beta test you giving for a quarter of a year for three months mm -hmm. and then don't give for three months and see the difference in the energy that's created around you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm um, even the, oh, well, the, the uh, assistant director property manager that's on this property. He was in the office when I brought up the global, you know, right program and he looked at me like wait a minute what uh, like you're doing that yeah due to the fact that he doesn't know me right okay he was like oh my god that is a brilliant idea getting everybody everybody in the complex involved right and i was like why not i mean do do a food drive Let's right just Let's do it. Let's let's have everybody contribute. Right. And all of a sudden, the energy, sh it just shifted entirely right. in that office. Right. It was like, oh my God, somebody actually gives a shit. Yeah. You lit that spark. And by sharing your story, you lit a spark for yeah, him. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, well, I'm not saying that it's happened now, but I'm saying that. I, I would be apt to, you know, go knocking on doors, but yet you're not really allowed to do that here. You know, that's right. kind of like soliciting in some way, shape or form. <laughs> but um, just putting out that vibe, that energy starts just like, like you said, and I say it the same way too, is this ripple effect. It is. I mean, the energy just like like a like you you're dropping a a stone in a calm pond or a river, okay, and seeing that ripple go outwards, mm -hmm. it's amazing what one person can do. Yes, yes. In the midst of a world of chaos. Okay, and if anyone gonna, watching this has not seen, pay it forward. See please it. Watch it. Please watch yeah, it. Please watch that movie. And also, it will explain, you will see acted out what he's talking about right this moment. Also, another movie, if nobody has seen it, absolutely, I watch it five, six, seven times during the year just to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, rechar recharge that energy of giving mm -hmm. back and, and, and really wanting to help out. 
watch the movie Powder. Yes. Okay, the old movie Powder, not the new movie Powder, the yeah. old movie Powder, where there was the albino child. Yes. That had that had basically oh. psychic abilities and 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 be able to do like telekinetics and, and all kinds of crazy stuff, and look at how the people treated him and yes. look at this world and see what's happening. Yes. Yes. And see what we got to do. Now I'm going to have to go back and watch that. I haven't watched That's, it. In yeah. I, this year, I don't, oh I don't think I've, I don't, don't think I've watched it once this year yet. Um, Ugly but, cry <laughs> uh, it's, 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 Yeah, that's a cry night. It's it okay is. though. And I wanted to extend the courtesy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. A big thank you. Okay, for you, Tammy, for Thank being, you, you know, here. yeah, it's, it's, it's no worry. See, the thing is, is that we don't really, and I love this part of the job, mm -hmm. I'm going to call it a job because it's part of the job. Um, I, I love this part of the job where we don't even know what we're going to ask. We don't know what we're going to talk about. And once we get into a certain kind of energy, mm -hmm during the show episode it just keeps flowing and keeps flowing and keeps mm -hmm. flowing and then when we when we choose it to stop is when it stops right and, uh, or when we just get bored <laughs> <laughs> um or, so i do wish everybody uh, I, we're going to do more episodes obviously um of this there's going to be many you know we're going to talk obviously tammy and i are going to work out you know talking about manifestation and abundance um you know talking about giving back giving more examples of giving back even I mean, shoot, if I, if I say it, I'll even show, I'll do a live video or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Walk, well, hopefully, I don't know when I walk into Dollar General, my, my, you know, my data is pretty crappy, but um, <laughs> you know, but maybe I'll just record it on my phone, you know, and then, right. and then you know, and then share that would it be on you. Wonderful to show people, you know, and actually show the difference that it makes. Right. I mean, I love, I, I love, honestly, this time of year is my biggest year of, you know, biggest time of year of watching tear jerker Christmas movies, honestly. It's okay to be mushy this time of year. It's okay. You no, know, it really is. And, you know, I love the feeling. I love, you know, I, I love feeling vulnerable at times, mm -hmm. you know, and I guess that's where self mastery comes into play of really accepting the masculine and feminine energies, right. you know, within any one person. Right. And it just gives me the energy and the power to mm -hmm. continue doing this work and now i actually get it now, just right. today just today now i get it oh. of what i'm supposed to continue doing it regardless of anything that's going on in my life right so, which, Wonderful. Is, which is the show sent, you know sending out the message continue to share it and, and bringing you guys on board and sharing your stories and sharing your views Okay, of Anytime. your it, it, I have had a blast. Um, it's been my pleasure doing this. Anytime you uh, have a, an open topic or something, or you would like I got a to lot have me back, I would love to come back and talk to everyone. I got a lot of topics. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Honey, I'm Southern. I've been raised to talk. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I swear I was actually, I had, I was Southern. I was born in a Southern area in mm -hmm. one past life or a couple. So when I'm <laughs> down here. Laugh when I'm in circle, because I circle as yeah. I'm talking and then I'll be, we got to do this and we got to right. do that. Right. And people will look at me and be like, Okay, I saw that Southern Baptist yeah. come out. Yeah. yeah, 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 right, right. And they see, and they all, always see that like the Puerto Rican come out of me, or you know, <laughs> or, or the the Universal Spiritualist. I can't. I, I honestly, I will say this: once you get to the point of your life where your your whole life is surrounded with spirituality and and growth and stuff like that, the less people are going to want to be around you. <laughs> Unfortunately, I um, I can't even go to any parties or any get-togethers anymore with my old friends because that's all I talk about. Yeah, and you'll get that. And I've heard that before. Someone told me we were talking one night, and it was this guy, a friend of my brother's, and the guy looks at me. He was like, "Oh God, you're pagan." Yeah, why? And he goes, "Cause you guys just don't know when to stop talking about it." Well, I'm. What I'm saying, what I mean by being spiritual and not being able to go into any get-togethers is because I love coaching. 
Mm-hmm. I love mentoring. I love hearing people's problems and, and giving them some options, you know, to do, to work things out and to share with them like the mind, the open mindset that I have. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I start doing that, people kind of like pull me to the side and is like, listen, Raven, um, can you not do that? <laughs> Like, can we just have fun and not, you know, and not, you know, can we just play cards, play, you know, play games or, you know, just have a good time barbecue and just not talk about spiritual shit. <laughs> and I, but then you kind of get hit because then to me, it's kind of like when someone says that. Well, it's kind of a I'm kick in the balls, to be honest. It I mean, it's kind of like, well, you're asking me not to breathe now. Right. And, you know? and, and but what, what I love the most is the people who... I actually help freely, of course. You know, I do like the the ones that I help freely. And when they come back to me and they say, thank you so much. They were like, you know what? At that time, I didn't have anybody to turn to. Mm -hmm. And you just made total sense of like everything that's going on in my life right now. And, and you know, and I'm able to finally see it you know, see it for what it really is and be able to make changes and, you know, and things like that. I love that stuff. I love to say, listen, right. you're, you don't have to be down the rest of your life. You don't have right. to. Right. Okay. And, and you don't have to feel crappy. You know, you don't have to, you, you don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be sad. You don't have to be suicidal. Okay. You don't have to be angry. Okay. Or rageful, you know, all the time. And the more people, then we'll go. Okay. The, the more people like us mm-hmm. that are teaching the value of being human mm-hmm. is it needs to increase. It does. The, number, the numbers have to increase. It does. Stop being afraid. Yeah. You know, de- death is on its own clock. Okay. Mm-hmm. We know, we know, we know this. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're all going to die. Let's do something. Okay. Do something meaningful. Yeah. Stop being so selfish. You know, stop being so Mm one-sided and, and say, and you, Oh, this is a big one. Get off your friggin' phones. Yes. Yeah. I got a phone too, but I put my phone down most of the time and I just, I answer, answer messages and boom, you know, that's it. All right. Don't be a slave. That used to be me years ago. This is what you saw all the time. Yeah. And I see it all the time, even in my own relationships and my own family. I see I it. I get messages from above through a text. Okay. No, I we got that before. Tell something. <laughs> I would say, so, tell me something. I'd say, no, I just read this. You, didn't you text me? And I'd go back and look and it wasn't there. Yeah. Um, I thought that's bad when they have to do that. Yeah, that is kind of bad. Um, I've never had that happen, but honestly, and if it happened, there must have been some sort of an extreme, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a message that had to be sent to you. Now I keep um, that over here. It's I'm the, not the whole that. thing is mm-hmm. that technology can be great. It mm-hmm. can be a great tool. It can for communication, uh, for assistance, you know, for helping and, and stuff like that, um, mainly communication. But it can also be an obsession. Yes. It can be a drug. Yes. I mean, the PlayStations, the Xboxes, the Nintendo Switch. I'm not knocking. I'm a gamer myself. I I, yeah. I, I love playing video games. Um, but. But it yeah. has to be, just like anything in life, it has to be in moderation. Moderation. Okay. Yes. You've got to give yourself a time frame. Once that time frame's over, stop. Right. Okay. Right. And same thing with the phone, which, I mean, I use it for meditation. I use it for videos. I use it for advertising and marketing. Okay. And, and I'm a lot on my phone. I am. But the fact is I'm productive. Okay. Right. I, I use it for specific things. Right. And, but don't make technology be the one thing that is priority. Right. Okay. Because going out, which I'm going to be doing, Okay, I feel very, very pulled to doing it, is going out in this local community mm-hmm. and finding out how I can really make an impact. Right. 
And if you can find that out wherever you are, wherever you're located, no matter what country you're in, okay, that would be the best thing humanly possible, okay, that we can do for our world. And I will tell you now, if you say, you know what, I am down on my luck. I have been there. Times are hard. You know, we're completely rebuilding our life right now. Um, if you're out somewhere and you say, well, you know, I can't do this because I don't have the money. I can't do that. Well, you know what? Hold the door, share a smile, something. share a compliment, say hello, do something in a positive manner to impact someone. Yep. To, to, to I, I just can't stress that enough. The things that people can do do not always have to be monetary. And to add to that, Mm -hmm. and even my great grandmother used to say this and it's true through and through it is mm -hmm. true courtesy and kindness is contagious yes it is it's like a freaking virus yes a positive it's positive like, <laughs> positive it's virus. Like the negativity and all the hate we see going on on social media yeah. platforms today Yep. The funny thing is, is that the positive side can do the same thing. Absolutely. And I'm seeing more of the positive side mm -hmm. reaching out now, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm seeing, and I think honestly, <laughs> well, I keep saying it, we'll get going, but <laughs> I do think that there's like this specified group of certain individuals that just like to sip the misery cup mm -hmm. and they just, they feed off of it. Yeah. And it just, it gets their, it, like they get their rocks off. Oh yeah. On, you know, on oh, yeah. misery and making people like, uh, because it you know, bullying their and, I mean, I, I've seen this even when I was younger yeah. too. But it lessens their misery when they do that. They, they're not focused on their misery. It just makes them feel better. I mean, yeah, seriously. I, I, see, I, even see, I see it with these kids, too. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay, mm -hmm. somebody is a little heavy set. Somebody has a condition. Okay, so what? Do you know that? More than likely, no. Okay, but the circumstance of the situation is still the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's still the same. If, again, and we're going go right back full circle to parenting. Okay, shitty parents create shitty kids. Shitty kids create more shitty kids. Okay, so the more, and it doesn't mean that you have to be like some of these weird, I, I'm going to say weird for a change. Mm -hmm. Okay, some of these weird TV shows that I see that everybody is like sunshines and freaking rainbows. Okay? Yeah. Because life's not like that, obviously. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the circumstances, a majority of the time, just keep yourself aware, you know, mm -hmm. keep yourself aware, keep yourself open to it and just, and just be, I'm going to end the mm -hmm. show with this. Okay. Like I do all my shows. Okay. Be humble, live in the vibration of love. Yes. And take care of each other. Oh, Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Always eternal. All right. Mm -hmm. So, again, thank you, Tammy, for being here. Um, My it's, pleasure. It's been a blessing. Seriously, thank oh, you thank for letting you so me do much. this. Thank you so much. Okay. It's I do wonderful. definitely look forward to doing another one. <laughs> awesome. That's good. <laughs> all right. That's good. Um, but, again, guys, blessings to you all. Love and light. Namaste. Oh, before I go, shoot, I almost, I almost didn't do that. Since you're a teacher, since you're a reader, yes. um, how are people going to get in contact with you? Um, you can reach me uh, email at uh, Tammy Trotter, T A M M Y T R O T T E R, 71 at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook as uh, you can find me under Tammy Trotter Wells, and Trotter Wells is hyphenated. Um, I'm on LinkedIn as Tammy Trotter. Uh, email is usually the best way to get a hold of me. Um, and then if you set up teachings or readings or what have you, then I will give you more contact information for me. Uh, but yeah, your best bet is either Facebook or email. Brilliant. 
Brilliant. Excellent. Okay. And you guys already know me. Okay. You can easily find me Raven Nightclaw on Facebook. Uh, you can check out my, you know, my, um, my couple of sites. Um, but mostly ravennightclaw.weebly.com, healing life with healing life from within .weebly.com, um, as well as my YouTube channel, which is also healing life from within and healing life from within on Facebook for readings, coaching, mentoring, you know, really great energy work. All right. So until next time, folks, this is the Raven's Den. Till next Bye, time. Everyone. Love and light, guys. Be blessed.